fine. Um, just want us to turn to uh, Proverbs 28. Yeah, Proverbs 28. And um, I think it's verse 13. Okay, um, Proverbs 28 and verse 13. Okay. It says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Okay, so um, yeah, it talks about our instinctively, you know, our instinctive response to any wrongdoing. Okay, like even if you see children, uh, they want to pretend that something didn't happen, or you know maybe the, they broke something. Uh, you know the the instinctive thing is okay. Oh, I didn't break it, you know, or they just push it aside, hide, or you know do something like that. So um, our, our like even when Adam and Eve, you know, when we um, so God asks, where are you? So they're just hiding. So the instinctive thing is to. Uh, cover up our mistakes or cover up what is lacking uh, trying to trying to portray us as some some someone else you know rather than uh, our limitations and so on so it here is specifically talking about sin it says when we cover up we will not prosper you know there's no benefit in covering up you know at that moment it might seem like okay uh, I've covered up or I've escaped the the whole thing of shame and being found out, etc. But it does not help us to prosper because God's idea or God's will for us is to really prosper. So, you know, like we studied in financial prosperity, in our stewardship, you know, prosperity is more than just wealth, right? Prosperity is thriving, flourishing in all aspects, um, you know, spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and you know, body. Um, God wants us to really thrive and flourish, do well. So when we cover up, it does not help us. Okay, that's one thing we see. Um, the second thing we see is okay. So so what do I do? Okay, so what do I do? You know, as a human being, yes, we fall uh, intentionally sometimes, unintentionally at other times. Uh, so what do we do? It says here, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So. So that's the thing, you know, like confesses meaning, okay, I come clean and I surrender and I say, yes, it was me, right? So that is one part of it. I confess. Now that's a, that's a big step, and but it's a step worth taking, right? Because there are a lot of things preventing us, holding us back from even confessing, right? So we confess and we come back saying, come back to God saying, like 1 John 1, 9 talks about, he who confesses, you know, uh, we, we have to come back and confess. So confession is one part of it. The other part of it is forsaking. Okay, it's not just to confess and say, yeah, I'm guilty. The other part of it is to forsake, meaning, and it's a beautiful picture that we have of forsaking. It means to actually push away, right? Uh, it's like, you know, uh, like somebody said, it's like, you suppose you're, you know, you you're playing, you you've been just playing out in the sun, or you've been doing some hard work, and you know your clothes are all messy. Maybe you just fell down on the mud, and it's all, you know, it's all messy. You're sweating, and you you just can't wait to change, right? You just can't wait to change. And the soiled clothes, the ones which are full of grease and mud, and you know, sweat and so on, you're not going to hold on. To, you know, you're not going to carry it and hold on. You're going to push it aside you know as far as possible because you know you are clean you want to get clean and you want to put on so so the picture there is forsaking is to push away right so confess which means come clean and say yeah that that was me it was my mistake but the second part of it is to forsake to push away you know that very thing that we're saying okay this is what i did many times we confess but we just still hold on right so um, proverbs 20 13 um, talks about confessing and pushing away, and then experiencing mercy. You know that's the promise. You know because mercy is there. The door to mercy is just waiting to be open. God is merciful. Uh, he is kind. So He is waiting to, um, you know, pour out His mercy, restore, redeem, 
but it requires confession it requires coming clean it requires pushing away and forsaking right so i um, just want to remind us that that uh, god's will for us is not to cover up our sins but to really um, when we confess and forsake it he he wants to prosper he wants us to prosper right let's pray father we we thank you for this morning we thank you lord that um, that is your heart Lord, the Father's heart, Lord, to prosper His children, his sons and daughters. Lord, that we we should not be bound by anything, that we should not be held back by anything, God. Lord, that we should not be pulled back by any limitations, Father God, of the flesh or uh, of the of the of the spirit or God. Anything, Lord, Your will for us is that we should soar, walk and run and soar high, God. And so, God, Lord, we thank you for this exhortation that, uh, Lord, that we will, Lord. When we cover up, we will not prosper. But then when we confess and when we push it away, forsake it, O oh God, we have mercy. And mercy, Lord, always triumphs over judgment. And mercy leads us to restoration. Lord, it is your mercy that leads us to thrive and prosper and flourish, O oh Father God. And so, God, we thank you since that is your heart and that is your will for each one of us, God. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the door, Lord, to mercy. Is, is right there in front of us, oh God, if we would confess and forsake and step in, Father God. Master, we thank you for, for, the, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for making a way for us to come to the Holy of Holies in order to receive grace and obtain mercy for the living of this day, God. We thank you, Lord. We, I just pray for full restoration, Lord, for each one of us. I, I just pray for thriving and flourishing, God, that you have for us, Lord. That is your will for us, oh Master that we would just thrive and flourish spirit, soul, and body. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so we've been looking at, um, in biblical preaching, we've been looking at some practical aspects, right? We looked at um, uh, some of the gestures um, you know, which are important, uh, that it should not distract, uh, our body language, and so on. Okay. And I think the last time we looked, the last point we looked at was that we don't, we should not disqualify ourselves. Okay, um, disqualify ourselves, put ourselves down in any way, saying we are not an expert, we have not learned enough, or you know, I didn't spend too much time preparing. You know, all that is unnecessary because it's uh, it's a distraction. It's going to be a barrier for the people uh, to receive. Right. So so avoid that. Right. Um, also, some practical things is, um, you know, like um, um, to say, um, you know, this is, this is something very um, useful for us as, uh, you know, as communicators of the gospel. It is very useful to, to include the words, use words like we, us, right? You know, rather than saying you, or I want you to know, or I want to tell you today. I mean, it's it's fine, but you know, it's it's good to include everyone. So to say that you know we have gathered here, uh, or God wants us to go someplace. You include yourself. You know, you're not above that, right? You realize that yes, um, that day you've been appointed, or you've been you know given that opportunity to minister. Uh, and and so on, but you realize that you are one of you know one of the rest. You're not in any way qualified more than the others because our qualification is the blood of Jesus, which everyone else has experienced as well, right? So so um, so that's the thing. So uh, rather than saying you are you know you need to change, you know to say that we need to change or you need to you know give up these things to say you know we maybe are maybe we are ch challenged by these things and we need to move on so uh, so it helps to use that you know that that pronoun uh, like uh, um they call it the king's pronoun you know that the king would say we have come you know I, i'm sure you would have you know even in your language you know uh, in your own you know languages there is that usage you know you, if you'd seen any of these old dramas um, or you know, place you know, uh, yeah, we have spoken, or the king would say that, right? Uh, give give the himself so much of respect, and we and us and so on. Um, so it's 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 better safer to use that, right? Uh, in a gathering, addressing a church, 
because um, you're you're not putting people down when we say you know we and us rather than I would like you to do it. You, know, you need to do this or you need to change, right? Okay. Um, so you are including yourself. You're saying that I'm also you know part of you when you do that. Okay. And certain other things that we say is um, like you know we say uh, let's say we quote a particular verse scripture. We give a reference and then we say you know I don't want you to turn into that. You know don't turn the Bible. So everybody is curious. You know everybody wants to do that. You know some people are just waiting to turn there, and some people might be fine. You know okay I'm not going to turn, but then others are. Okay, why did he say don't turn? You know, maybe he says, you know, he's just quoting half the verse. I want to see the full verse. So that's also, you know, something that uh, what was actually there? What's the verse before that? So um, you can just say, you know, if you don't want them to turn, just don't say it. Just say the verse. People won't, right? But if you say, you know, uh, I don't want you to turn, people will. So you know, they can avoid that. And other things like, um, you know, I'm sure you know this reference. Uh, you know. Jeremiah 29, 23 or 21. I'm sure you know the reference. It's better to actually say, paraphrase the verse or quote the verse because it's possible that uh, some may not know. Right? It's possible that some it doesn't click. You know, Maybe they've read it, but that morning it's all blank. But so uh, they're not helped. They're not benefiting. Right? So, so you actually quote the verse. So don't say, you know, I'm sure you know this passage or I'm sure you know the story, etc. It's um, you know it's it's not required, right? Okay, okay. Another point. Uh, this is point number nine is to avoid. See now again, it depends on the audience, but to avoid what we can call as you know Christian jargon, right? The church Christian jargon or Christianese Christian language, right? In the sense, which means that uh, see words like justification, sanctification, consecration. You no, know, this for a Christian audience it makes sense, right? It depends on the audience again, right? But for a let's say uh, maybe an unchurched gathering, uh, or uh, maybe they are unbelievers, right? So to use these terms, uh, it, it's not part of their vocabulary, right? It's not part of the thing. They're not going to be familiar with these words. So be mindful of that, right? Uh, avoid these Christian jargon, um, etc. So think about it, right? Um, another thing also is, um, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so certain things you can just go through. You know, an another thing is like idioms, phrases, slangs. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Um, uh, some idioms and phrases. You know, for example. Um, you're saying, okay, I, I got on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I got up from the wrong side of the bed this morning. Okay, so what does that mean? You got up with a bad mood or you're upset. Uh, you're not really feeling yourself. Okay, but for a, for another audience, it will be a literal thing, right? I, so they're thinking, what is the wrong side? You know, is it like something like Vastu? Yeah, you thought that. What is the wrong side? Yeah, maybe maybe he fell down. See, so so all of us are thinking different things. Maybe what is the wrong side? Maybe you got off that side, this side. So don't use that, right? So especially be mindful. Again, it's it's respecting the audience when we when we are you know considering all these things when we are communicating, right? Um, so yeah these slangs and usages and so on okay um, so the thing is when we avoid this we are clear making it very simple and with simplicity uh, comes impact right because uh, it's there's no there are no filters you're cutting through barriers uh, there are no two you know two ways to think about it it's cutting right through right so think about that okay another thing uh, on similar lines is point number 10, which is avoiding verbal fat. Okay, so what is that? That is, you know, you instead of using one word to convey a meaning, you're using several words which have the same meaning. Okay, 
Now, I want to give you an example, uh, uh, an illustration, a story. You know, why, why say all that? You know, I, to describe my point, you know, I'm saying, I, I just want to give you an example, uh, an illustration. Uh, uh, you know, that's verbal fact. You're taking up space, you're taking up time. The people become tired when they hear, right? We don't realize it, but people become tired, and you also, you know, instead of one word, simple word, we've used two or three words. Okay, so that's a, that's called a verbal fact, right? Uh, unnecessary things. Can we trim it? Right? Can we not use these things? Um, what is it that requires or that is not required in that statement? Right? Think about it and just leave it out. Okay. 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 Let's say um, you've shared the message and maybe it's in a setting where there is interaction. For, for example, it's like a, maybe like a youth gathering or whatever gathering. And maybe there's a panel discussion. Maybe you can you know, open up the time for question answers. Okay, so what do we do then? So the thing is to be alert during the time Okay, when people ask questions. So many times what happens is you, we hear the first few words and we are already thinking of what to answer. Okay, so somebody says, uh, you know, this is the question that I have, and but you've not heard the full thing. Just heard, okay, maybe, and you're already thinking of, okay, maybe I can share this, I can share this, and we miss out on this, you know, the the full thing. So yeah, the what is that exact thing? And then we start off by answering in some other direction, which is, you know, different from what the person actually wanted. So then again, that person says, you know, actually I was asking about this and then, so it's a waste of time, right? So um, stay alert and then, um, you know, uh, answer to the point and, and so on, okay? Okay. Um, it, it also helps if we, if we get feedback from people, okay? So don't, don't be afraid of feedback, you know, after a message, maybe, what is feedback? Yeah, so they're just giving you, they're just feeding you back with information, right? Uh, you shared, and then people are responding with some information about how it was, how they received, and etc. Okay, so sometimes it's good, and sometimes it could be bad, right? And, uh, and the thing is, uh, people can give feedback by not giving feedback also, right? So you, you see... And uh, maybe they, they don't want to say anything about the message. Maybe they don't, they're just avoiding, you know. Then you realize that, okay, okay, maybe it wasn't so effective, you know, all that. So you're getting some feedback. And even the response, you know, response during the time when you share the message, you're constantly getting response. You know, maybe people are distracted. Maybe that day, you know, that person's having a bad day. Maybe they're not able to focus. Maybe they didn't sleep through the night. And, uh, you know, they are feeling drowsy, all those things are there, okay? So, so don't get overly, con overly um, what, critical about yourself based on the feedback. And the thing is this, you know, in the feedback, let's say people come up to you and say something, um, you know, I like this, but I didn't like that. Um, if there is some truth to it, you feel that, okay, there's some truth to what they're saying, um, receive it, okay? Don't be too upset, right? Okay, it's human to feel... And I, I should have done better. Uh, I wish I hadn't said that. It's human to human nature to feel that, right? Immediately we feel, ah, why is this person telling me this? But and the way they say it also. See, not everybody is nice. Okay, so, somebody will come and say, hey, why, man? Why did you do that? <laughs> and then immediately you feel, oh God. And especially in, just after you shared, you're you know so vulnerable emotionally. You know you just shared everything and you just, you just come off and then somebody says you should not have said that or why did you say that and you're feeling all bad right so it's it's possible but just take it as a learning you know take it as a thing that okay um yeah let me take it process it not think too much about it i'll take that i'll receive that and work on it okay take it that way it's it's going to take some maturity it's going to take some effort on our part okay and nowadays, you know, people can just send an email <laughs> or a text saying, you know, this, 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 you know, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that, uh, you know. So, uh, 
see when you receive a text or an email the tendency is to read in or put in some emotions there right see especially when you read the bible read the bible you put some emotions there you you put in that because see it is it is after all plain text right it's just plain words so you don't hear the voice of the person you know it's just the words of the person just texted so you don't know whether it was said angry manner whether they are laughing and whether they are smiling you don't see any emotions you don't see any you know expressions so it depends on how you're feeling that time you know if you're feeling very positive and help you know this thing and you read it in a very nice way but then if you're feeling all you know uh, if you're having a bad day and you, you read that and we tend to put emotions there right so don't do that right just read it objectively take it and uh, and use it okay and and it's a wonderful opportunity to um change right wonderful opportunity to learn okay and i i shared right about that person after i finished a um, sunday morning message he came and said you know you need to change your voice you don't speak in a monotone you know i i feel sleepy right the content is good but then the way you say it i'm feeling sleepy right and then one more person said um see like some of us learned words wrongly uh you know when you learn, so that that's how i learned some one word especially w e r e okay is uh, apparently it's were it's not where where is w h e r e okay where are you going okay so um so in one of the announcements i you know i kept saying where where whereas it was just were you know those were the announcements it's not those were the announcements right so in our sunday announcements uh, i used to say those were the announcements so sit back relax and be blessed you know i'd say that uh so this lady she taught she used to teach english so the english teacher spoken english so she came and said pastor you're making a mistake you know w r e is were not where I, i was like oh no you know so many years people have been listening to my voice in the announcement <laughs> so then um so next time uh, when i got an opportunity to re-record it i changed it to those were the announcements <laughs> so yeah so that helped you know so the thing is if, if she had kept quiet i would have continued making the mistake though at that point you might feel a little bad yeah, I, yeah a little bit uh, or maybe more <laughs> whatever but then uh, you know it's an opportunity to learn to change so that uh, things can be better okay so take it that way right okay um well people can be angry sometimes people can be angry people can be upset people can say so don't be put off by that right when they are angry when you say things you also get stirred up and get angry or when they are upset you also get so don't you know look through the emotions you know that's always uh, especially when it comes to you know we were last thursday talking about interpersonal conflicts and all that you know many times when we when when anger is portrayed as an emotion look through that what are they saying actually right what are they saying look through that and uh, receive the message okay any questions here any thoughts um you you have a question francis has a question okay uh, online folks also if you have any questions you can Uh, pastor regarding the christianis uh, so pastor i went on funeral service so is a brother and church they are, they are taking care so what happened is like each person is coming and saying about that person who died and after that uh, he is inviting to the like gospel if anybody is hearing anybody is hearing new the verses uh, you should receive the jesus christ so is it needed or is like lot of other religious people are there they are like hey, you artist this so is not needed so yeah so uh, funeral service um so what you're saying is uh, is an altar call really required there yeah but funeral service is not, because the thing is it's about death okay i know it's slightly off topic but since it's about death uh, all people have questions especially those who don't have the assurance of uh, you know uh, i'm saved therefore when i die you know i'll be fine or i'm going to this place 
so people have that they don't have that assurance when they don't receive when they've not yet received jesus as lord and savior so uh so it can be a wonderful time for people to receive but it also depends on how you convey how, how you know what you convey uh thing so yeah it has to be a clear when you know that it's a mixed congregation uh when i say mixed congregation it's it's you know church unchurch believers non believers um it has to be a little you know simple and thing but um uh but it's a wonderful opportunity to actually yeah share the gospel ask questions i've had some very interesting conversations um yeah with people uh you know the dead bodies there and we just waiting you know sitting around and some very interesting conversations right especially with this person he he had some things about he had fear of death so so he was asking me you know i, I generally we were just talking i said how are you related to this person and all then they said you know i have this fear of death you know you die and you they put you and then they put mud all over you <laughs> so he was like it was going to be dark and so then i said it was kind of senior person then i said you know you know you won't see all that it's your body which is dead but your spirit the bible says that your spirit depending on what choice you've made either goes to be with jesus or away from jesus so you can actually make a choice then he said yeah actually i am a believer so he was a believer but still having these kind of doubts and you know so you can you can have actually some good conversations about the lord about life after death so it's a wonderful opportunity depends on how what message is conveyed yeah same thing like us in marriage or since also first mm. so like christ is coming to marry the church they will put this message uh, at last so, <laughs> yeah so those kind of things uh yeah we need to we need to think you know yeah how is it, what are people going to think you know uh, how will they uh, yeah, for a for a non christian how will they actually see the whole thing um and so once we think about it and then maybe we can convey it a little differently yeah okay okay next we let's look at um, you know when th there is a difference when we between a one off message right maybe you're a person who's traveling passing through you're just a guest speaker uh, there's a difference between that and you know if you're going to be uh, more of a you know pastoral kind of a role if you're in the pastoral role or if you're going to be with that particular group over a period of time right you could be it could be a you know small group leader or maybe you're doing a bible study and you could meeting with that group weekly monthly maybe over a period of time then um there's a difference you can approach what you're sharing a little differently right see when, especially when it's a visit a one off visit um maybe just one message it's it's good to share you know like a a word in season a season whatever god put, puts in your heart of course but you know it's good to share something which is uh, which is full in itself you know it's not like a series right which does not require you know you and that's the word you completed it and you've shared it right whereas if you have opportunities to be there you know week after week or uh, you know several times in a year then you can actually do something with continuity okay so ministering the word as a pastor ministering the word as a visiting minister okay so especially as a pastor um you know you you're journeying with the congregation you're going with the congregation so you can you know you're going to be there at least 52 times in a year you know so 52 sundays and maybe 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 45 of those sundays you are preaching or 40 times so you can actually plan okay we are slowly build up you know the initial months you know this is the foundation that we are laying maybe the th next three months we're going to talk about different things and you know you can plan accordingly prayerfully plan that and look at it as a you know this is a journey that we are making as a church this year right i mean you look at uh, your own curriculum when right, as bible college students you know first semester you didn't jump in you know into the prophetic or uh, you didn't jump in with you know certain things which required a lot more uh, foundational things to be there it was a journey 
right? You talked about, okay, uh, what what is the, the character requirements of a minister? You talked about, okay, who I am, you know, as an identity, you know, those kind of things which are more foundational and then to build on. So you look at it that way when you're, you know, in a, in a pastoral kind of a role, okay? Um, if it's a pastoral role, it's also to be, good to be sensitive to what is the Lord doing with this group of people in this particular season, okay? What is God doing? What is God dealing with this congregation, with this church, with these with these people in this season? It's good to ask that question, um, and then you know pray through and receive and share that. Okay, uh, and as a church, okay, there are certain advantages. You can you know January, June, December, you can repeat the message and say, okay, here's a repetition, here's a reminder. Just want you to read, want to reiterate certain things, right? The word of the Lord, okay, half yearly reminder. You know, this is what we are going for, etc. Okay, uh, as a you know visiting minister, this is a one-time thing, so it, it's typically a word in season. Uh, it, you know, don't come across as a superstar. Don't put down the local church leadership who has invited you, right? Uh, respect them, respect the work that they have done. I always remember, like what Pastor Ashish, uh, you know, uh, in the early days and also later, he just kept reminding us as a team that, you know, when you leave the place, you leave it better than how it was when you came. Okay, not worse off, not creating some confusion, not, you know, you leave it better than how you, how it was when you came. So with that in mind, Right? You minister with grace. You minister with honor. Honor the people who have who are there before you. You know they've been there doing some work, a lot of work. Maybe it's not a great place. You know, maybe it's not a great congregation. In the sense in terms of maturity, in terms of spiritual understanding, may have they have, maybe they have a lot of you know a lot of distance to go. But you've been privileged to hear. You've been privileged to receive. So um, you you look at it that way, not as you know as an expert. Hey, I know these things. And you look down on them and say, you don't know this, and what is this? You know, what kind of a church is this? You know, no. Um, you know, you you honor the work that has happened before. People have toiled in terms of sowing, in terms of watering. You know, people have really done some hard work. They prepared the ground. And it's a privilege for you as a visiting person, guest speaker, to enter in to other people's labor, right? In that point to share. So uh, do it with honor, uh, respect the local church leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have to leave that place uh, better. Better. So, uh, so the, there is a church, like they don't know maybe about the baptism in Holy Spirit. I mean, they are not aware of that. So, how you can take that? Like, we can't tell, like, hey, guys, you don't know this. I mean, you don't uh, you don't uh, receive the baptism in Holy Spirit. Like, how to take things to them if they if they are not aware of some subjects in the Bible? Yeah. Or some yeah. Kind? So the, the so very simple. Take them back to the Word. Take them back to the Word and say this is there in the Word of God, and this is for if if you are talking about baptism of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues and gifts of the Spirit and so on, this is there in the Word of God. This is for every believer. Okay, so uh, and this is there. So when they when people see it in the word, uh, several barriers, biases, prejudices are broken down. They see it. You know, it's not like a Pentecostal thing. It's not like a you know denominational thing, but it's a scriptural thing. So they see it in the word and they say, okay, this is what God wants for me. This is what. So they're drawn to the heart of the Father more than anything else. No, they're drawn to God's will, God's desire, and to see that hey, it is. So there could be a lot of fear. There could be a lot of you know barriers. So everything is broken down by the truth, because truth does that. You no, know? truth has that capacity to eliminate truth, and the Holy Spirit leads us, guides us into truth. And all these lies, all these fears, are just dismantled. And then they realize that okay, because some people have like a friend of ours. She had this fear, uh, since you mentioned, you know, praying in, uh, I mean, baptism of the Holy Spirit. She had this fear that uh, maybe she's influenced by the wrong spirit. 
while praying in tongues right so she received she you, you know she used to at a time when we were not you know praying in tongues she used to pray in tongues but suddenly she got that fear you know maybe it is of the devil maybe it is of not of god and she stopped you know so people can have all kinds of fears so you just need to be patient you need to teach so instruction so teaching uh, uh, you know you know that um, that progression no when we teach there is revelation when there is revelation there is conviction in people's hearts when there is conviction people are moved to action and then when there is action or you know people are walking according to something then they reach a destiny you know they have as a church as a prophetic church as a you know a spiritual church and so on so it's going to take time so maybe god you know takes you there as a one off thing to lay some foundations right so trust god lay the foundation and uh, and see you know yeah so that's a what if that uh, one church pastor is not in mm. it, or don't know or don't uh, accept these things then can we take these things to the church like um, or else first we have to sit and talk with him then only no the thing is like see it's there in the word so you can definitely share it honorably um and then you know, share it and leave it there you know uh but then if the pastor has tells you already you know before going no speaking in tongues no holy spirit baptism then don't share about that yeah don't share you know because he specifically told you yeah don't share and uh, you know if the topic is walking in the spirit and he's saying don't talk about this then you can actually tell the pastor pastor you know these are passages that i'll mention that is for people to uh, think but uh, it's there in the word and uh, i but if you have a problem with it i'll just read it mention it and leave it at that is it okay if people ask questions you know uh, so you can handle it in different ways or one on one conversations off the pulpit off the mic you're having one on one conversations people come for prayer and you maybe you get an opportunity to clarify it's difficult it's challenging like certain places no people said they don't talk about uh immersion baptism okay because that church believed only in infant baptism see now the challenge is you have to be open to the truth you have to present the truth but the leadership is there holding you down discounting the truth itself so that's a difficult position so whatever you say it, you can't lift the church above the level of the leadership so they're going to discount what you said even after you've gone maybe they so it's a difficult thing so they, but if they are open irrespective of what denomination if they are open then you will experience a lot of freedom yeah Yeah, yeah. I think Nina wants the mic. So, Pastor, regarding this denomination, so I known person. Uh, so he went to another one church to leading the worship. Is a CSA denomination. So the congregation and the committee said like, don't use tongues and all. But in he started leading worship, the Holy Spirit said to him like he got. the thought to reading in uh, so he first yeah he he first shared about what is holy spirit baptism then he start uh, leading in tongues so what happened is even the church father also got uh, yeah so yes, yes pastor so so this thing and how we can handle hmm <laughs> how to go against do i you know do i go against man's word oh yeah um yeah so see uh if they say don't share the gospel you know then we have a problem right we have to share we have to talk about cross we have to talk about this but these other secondary issues uh these are a little you need to be a little sensitive yeah see here it's a good thing what if in the middle of the in the middle of the worship they switched off the mic switched off the mic turned down the thing it happened right and and say brother please go sit down 
it's, it happens. So you need to be little mindful and how you do it. Do it in an honorable manner. See, there are ways which you can do it in an honorable manner and uh, like leading worship and uh, like even singing in tongues. Maybe maybe you do it off the mic and you do it and then and then say, okay, uh, you don't have to be really in the face and you know pushing things down. Uh, and uh, and God will honor that and God will use that. Yeah. So it's but it's a difficult thing. So you need to be sensitive to yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll uh, get back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, be prepared for like um, two sessions, like one after the other, and then back to back. Um, and also start preparing your uh, the, the messages, sermons, based on the titles. Um. Okay, okay, just one sec. Let me just end the class. Okay, thank you, guys. God bless. Uh,